Well, good evening, and welcome back to Mystic Hour, a live podcast about all things mystical and nerdy, right here on Proficiency Bonus. I'm your host, Christy Mystic Water, and each week I'll be having some chill roundtable chats with all sorts of awesome people discussing all the geeky fandoms, hobbies, and cultures. Uh, before we begin our tradition here at Proficiency Bonus, going to do a quick shout out to our sponsor, Dice Bar, DiceBar.com. Go check them out for dice and D&D merch- merchandise, and if you enter the coupon code PROBO, P R O. B.O. You get free expedited shipping to anywhere in the world. It's very nice. So thank you, Dice Bard. Thank you, sponsors. Uh, thank you to Twitch and Streamlabs and making us an, uh, an affiliate. And that's about it. Um, tonight, we are doing something a little different because normally we do a lot of D&D stuff on this channel and a lot on this uh, podcast as well. But today, we're talking about Pokemon! That childhood nostalgia. Um... In lieu of tomorrow's big debut release of Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, I have some friends of mine that also love the Pokemons. So I'm going to take you over and I think it's not, yeah, it's not set up for some reason. (laughs) I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Oh God, what is happening? Nice. This is, (laughs) this is how we go. (laughs) God damn it. Well, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Just give me a few minutes. You guys can just talk for a minute while I try and... Look at that out. Skype feed, though. Look at that Skype feed. God damn it. <laughs> what is you, happening? At 5.02 p.m., Christy Mystic Water has received a photo from Chandra's Skype. From myself with the pic- portrait of Jeeves. Sorry, I just got to reading this because I was supposed to read something three days ago. Oh, What's going on? Oh, no. OBS does not like me right now. I got crystal. Wait, what? But you're in the wrong one, but it's fine. This is fine. This Crystals is fine, guys. are now Derek. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Ani, you are now what looks like uh, Derek, okay? That's really funny. Great. I would say let's just personality swap, but I don't know everyone enough to do that. Oh, I could probably pull off Crystal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That would be funny. Dale, you've got to imitate me now. Okay. So just talk about half orcs a lot. There we go. Half orcs and regular there orcs. Go. There we go. <laughs> Wait, that's that. Well, oh, oh, I'm teleporting. This is fine. Okay, I see Christy. There's Crystal. I lost Annie. Oh, no, I, I don't exist anymore. I'm That's sorry. fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're all I just, just, just saw Annie just like just fly out. Yes. Right there we go. I think I did it. I did Looks good. Thing. Okay, I, I fixed it kind of, sort of. <laughs> anyway, we're here now. <laughs> Welcome to Proficiency Bonus, where we always have technical difficulties. It wouldn't be a Proficiency Bonus stream without such difficulties. Anyway, I'm going to go around the table and get everyone to quickly introduce themselves, who you are, where you're from. If you want to do any quick shout outs, feel free. Let's start with Dale. Hello, I'm Dale. I was here last week talking about um, Roasting Christie, and I'm back again for some Pokemon. Uh, I'm still from Chicago, but live in Philadelphia. Enough of that hasn't changed. Uh, my shoutouts aren't going to change either. MCDM Productions and their upcoming book, Strongholds and Followers, for 5e Supplemental. And The Witcher TRPG by Pondsmith and Pondsmith and Thessalorian Games. Like good it. stuff. Good stuff. So good. All right, let's go to Crystal. What am I doing again? <laughs> Who are we from? Anything you want to tell? I'm panicking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my name is Crystal. I'm from California, but I live in Georgia right now um, for the past way too long. Um, I don't have any shout outs, I guess, but I'm happy to be here. Yay! <laughs> She's also our DM for Tuesdays. I am your DM on Tuesdays. Of course, how dare I can't hate It's very it's fun. Um, she's also the one that helped with the Bubbles one shot and gave the inspiration for the Rainbow T Rex. That's all her. Yeah. Of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> All right, next we have Ani. Hi, I'm Ani. Um, I'm on Delve and Dash, which just happened. So yeah, cool. I play Raz. You should watch it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. And also, I play with Christy um, in her Sunday game, which no one gets to see. Nope, it's a secret campaign. 
because we just have a soap opera. <laughs> Basically, there's no real fighting. It's just in. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Though. It's so good. And last but not least, we have Derek. Hello, I'm Derek. Uh, I go by iPyrite on almost all social media. Um, I am also on Delvin Dash. You probably just watch it if you're still here. Um, <laughs> also on Insight Check on Saturdays with Christy Yay. on the same channel. Uh, my D&D BB is here to talk about Pokemon, and I'm Umbreon, if you can't tell. I got that Umbreon, and I got a, another Umbreon little cute little lamp for the occasion. I'm all ready to Pokemon out. So, um, first off, I want to start off by asking everyone their... Well, I'll give you your top three Pokemon. If you, ha if you had to choose in real life, who would your top three Pokemon would be? And I will allow legendaries because mine's Mew in there, so I, uh, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> I don't have to change mine. <laughs> Do they have to be ones that are good at fighting, or just ones that we like? Uh, just ones. ones you like. Okay. So let's start with Dale. Um, hmm. I'd probably have to say Blaziken, Gardevoir, and Alolan Ninetales. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love Blaziken and, and Alolan Ninetales, so pretty. Uh, what about you, Crystal? Um, Articuno is definitely my favorite. Um, always has been. I, I also really love Starmie. And I debate a little, like, it changes a lot on the third one. But um, I'm going to go with Cubone because I feel really sorry for him. And I just want to <laughs> have all of them and keep them and feed them to keys. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have, I think, 15 of them on Pokemon Go right now. Because every time I see one, I have to catch it. And I have to keep it. I can't trade that one. <laughs> I can totally relate. I, <laughs> I have to keep them all the homes. I like your mommy now. It's okay. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ani? I would probably say probably my favorite is Mudkip because the first Pokemon game that I ever played was um, Alpha Sapphire, and that was my starter. And I named it Kippers or Kipper because that was my sister's cat's name at the time. Anyway, yeah. um, and then I think Arcanine. And Swablu Ooh. probably be tied for second. Why Swablu? Um, so it, I played Minecraft for a long time, and there's a mod in Minecraft where you can get Pokemon. <laughs> and it was the first one I got, and okay. I would like fly around on. Well, I fl flew around on the uh, um, Altaria, but like I just think Swablu are really cute because they're just like little puff. Little puffy puff birds puff. with like just clouds as wings and they're just adorable yeah pokemon um, minecraft also. is what got little dude into minecraft as well he was yeah, obsessed it's, with the video so. yep also it was the first shiny that i got in pokemon go Ooh. so that helped too what about you derek what are your top three uh, well my favorite is zoroark he's just awesome mm -hmm. um I don't know, it's hard for me. I think the I like Sand Slash and uh, Scyther a lot, mm. so it'd probably be my top three. But it's very hard to narrow down to just three. I know, three. right? <laughs> the struggle's yeah. real. Mine, my number one is Mew. It's always been Mew uh, because I love cats and it's so fucking cute. Uh, my second one, obviously, would be Umbreon for obvious reasons, and then my third one. Oh, it's so hard probably Charizard because he was my first level 100 Pokemon I've ever gotten that I did on my own so yeah probably Charizard would be my next pick but yeah but going off what Ani was saying that your your first Pokemon game was Alpha Sapphire yep uh, how long ago was that for you uh, that was my freshman year of college so oh wow five, four or five years ago oh okay um, because I grew up, I didn't, like, we didn't have any game systems or anything. The most technologically advanced thing we had was a computer where I played the Harry Potter games on. Um, <laughs> and so, when Another I... Another episode like, topic coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm in for that one. Harry Potter. I, was, I know, and the computer games are so good. Um, I went to a Japanese camp, and so everyone was talking about Pokemon and how great it was. And I'd never seen it, never played it, nothing. And I was like, oh, I want to play Pokemon. And so... I, for the first time, like, had a job, work-study, but whatever. And so for Christmas, I bought myself a 3DS and Alpha Sapphire because it had come out. Um, and that was the first first Pokemon game I ever played. Nice. So. What about you, Derek? What was your first Pokemon game? Uh, first exposure mine was, to Pokemon? Mine was uh, Pokemon Yellow. 
uh, I played it back on the Game Boy Color. Yeah. So I nice. remember late late at night, yep. uh, mom thinking I went to bed and Did I would just have, be like, hanging those, like, over um, the bed. Like uh, adapters that is like a little light. No. Oh. <laughs> what I would do is, of course, you, the screen wasn't lit up. No. So what I would have is I would have a night light. And Ooh. I would lean over my bed and just play Pokemon. <laughs> my mom was thought I was asleep, so. <laughs> but I, I think I beat Pokemon Yellow. I think maybe like fifty times or something like that. I played it so much. How old were you back the then? Game. I want to say maybe ten or twelve in between. I can't remember exactly the the age, but yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was like basically right when the game came out. Mm-hmm. I beg, begged my mom for it because you know it's Pokemon, yeah. <laughs> so. And of course, I was a big collector of Pokemon cards also when I was younger, yes. so... Did the Pokemon cards come first for you or after? Uh, I think the cards came first and then the game. I'm not sure. Mm. I, it's hard to remember back that yeah, far. Yeah, so. fair. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Uh, what about you, Crystal? I am a little older, I think, than most of you. Oh, so nice. I played uh, Red oh, when it first came out on the original Game Boy. Oh, not even Game Boy <laughs> Color? <laughs> No. Oh, wow, damn. Not, I never had a Game Boy Color, actually. Mm. Um, I moved straight to, like, a DS back after I got out of playing games for a while. Um, and I think it was black and white is when I got back into Pokemon. So, but yeah, no, my first experience with Pokemon was when Pokemon pretty much first started up. Uh, and I was, I had to have been, like, 10 or so at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Um. I was, yeah, really into it. I had red and my brother had blue. And we would trade Pokemon once that finally became a thing. Mm-hmm. But mostly we just, like, argue on yeah. all the time. <laughs> Which Pokemon was better. And, yeah. what about I'm you? pretty sure I started off with Charmander. So. Yes! That's what yeah. I did. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Charmander's the Charmander. best. Charmander. <laughs> Starter. Yeah. We'll get to starters in a minute. Uh, what about you, Dale? What was your first Pokemon or exposure to Pokemon? Technically, my first game was Pokemon Crystal. Oh. Um. And, but I was like a punk ass kid when I was playing that game. Like I was like really young, so it, I don't really count that. My first real interaction where I started to become a big Pokemon nerd was Pokemon Sapphire, the original one back on the Game Boy Advanced. Um, I played that a lot, and then moved immediately into Emerald from there. Even once Alpha Sapphire came out, I bought that as well and played that for a long time. And my starter was always Torchic. It's not even a question. It was always Torchic. Yeah. That's not a surprise. No. Mm. Who plays Kin? Who are you going to call? Torchic, and then I would spend those three hours in that grass right before, uh, right after the little town, just trying to find a freaking Waltz. Yep. Wow. Yep. 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 <laughs> Oh, Before surreal. Wonder Trade, you just luckily got one. <laughs> uh, my first exposure to Pokemon was the, actually the cards, because I didn't have any gaming system for the longest time. Uh, my cousin had the original Game Boy and had yellow, red, and blue. Like, he had all of them, and I was so mm-hmm. jealous. And all I had was the Pokemon cards, and I didn't even really know how to play the Pokemon card game. I just liked collecting them because they were shiny and cute. Uh, But my first real game, um, a friend of the family bought me a Game Boy Color with Game Boy with uh, Pokemon Gold. And that was my first game. And I had the little attachment with the light so I could hide under my covers (laughs) and just play it. And uh, the first time I beat it, I was actually home sick from school. I got a fever for two or three days and it literally took me just a full day of just playing on the couch, laying in laying on the couch she had, like had the tv on but i wasn't even paying attention because i was so immersed in just the pokemon gold and like i still remember when i had to go for like the the final four and lance showed up and lance had been like a reoccurring character and then i find out he's like the ultimate that like final guy you have to beat and i'm just like my mind is blown what's happening lance i trusted you and i was just shook I was so shook. I'll always remember that. So, yeah. Um, In terms of, like, we kind of mentioned starters. If you had to pick a favorite starter, not your first starter, but your favorite starter, who would it be? Anyone. Charmander. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Charmander's pretty great. (laughs) It's so... (laughs) 
Cyndaquil also, I, I yeah, like the Cyndaquil's character. Cute. Uh, well. Cyndaquil would be my second. Yeah, Cyndaquil's pretty fucking cute. Yeah, I'm either Charmander or Bulbasaur. I know Bulbasaur isn't great, but he's really he's so cute, cute. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think they did a good job of like taking the Pokemon that no one was gonna choose as a starter, aka anything other than the fire type, and they're still making them cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. What about you, Dad? Mine's, uh, between Torchic and Fennekin. Ooh, Fennekin! Oh. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I really I'm like uh, Fennekin. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well. We are going to talk a little bit about... Yeah, let's start with that. Hey, you, Pikachu, and hey, you, Eevee. What, have, you, have you guys seen the trailers? Have you seen any gameplay? Have What are your thoughts on what's going to be coming with this new, more childish version? I mean, Pokemon's always been catered to children, but this one seems a little bit more... I've seen the trailers many times. Um, my kids are very excited. Mm-hmm about the game and they're getting it for christmas so that just makes them even more excited <laughs> although we're it is coming in tomorrow but um, yeah they're not going to get it until then fair, so fair. they're <laughs> super excited about it so i've seen a lot of um the trailers and i've read a few things because i was i was curious how they tied in with pokemon go mm-hmm. and what the crossover would be between the two of them and it's kind of from what i've gathered it's most mostly like a sandbox zone mm-hmm. where you can pull in your pokemon go characters but just for that sandbox area yeah. it doesn't affect the rest of the game yeah. so i was like all right thank goodness because i don't want to have them playing mewtwo at level, level one yeah. in uh let's kind of go eevee yeah yeah we don't need to break the game at yeah. eight years old. So, yeah. and they've kind of said too that they wouldn't be doing a cloud option just because it, they would. It, it it brought up the idea that they could like hack the system and eventually get all the Pokemon if they do a cloud system because you can just reset from a save file if, after trading and stuff. So that's mm-hmm. part of the reason why they're not doing the cloud online route. Yeah. What about you guys? What do the rest of you think of the trailer and gameplay? If you see. <clears throat> I think it's it's expected. I just finished playing Ultra Moon a couple of weeks ago, which is their most recent game, and that was a very, I mean, it was it was still uh, somewhat childish. But I mean, you got to think about who their audience is exactly. catered to. Exactly, and but it's always been that way. It was definitely much more mature than the last games were. I mean, you were dealing with wormholes and going through like planes of existence, yeah, like you just showed up in some other place, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's even post-game content that's, like, really in your face and labeled as such, as opposed to, like, yes, I'm marching on to the battle tree now. Mm-hmm. It's like you actually have, uh, you run into Team Rainbow Rocket, because they're from a different dimension. And oh. Giovanni actually gives a call out to, hmm, a child standing before me like this feels similar for some reason. Mm-hmm. Because the idea is there was no hero in the previous universe to stand up to these villains now they're all showing up here and trying to mess around so it was much more mature and it doesn't surprise me that they kind of toned it back Mm. for the next game especially with all the connection to pokemon go because that was everyone's big thing was like kids love this they go out they get to find pokemon it's it's not surprising and i think it also is a a testament to the fact that it's going to be on the switch which Mm -hmm. is like very child oriented Mm -hmm, for sure It'd be a little bit different if you're getting, like, a PlayStation 4 version. Like, it'll never happen. Oh, but if you're I getting wish. a PlayStation 4 version of Pokemon, like, oh. I'm hoping serious. for some, like, Final Fantasy 15 yes! graphics by the Pokemon. Oh, so like, oh. That would be interesting. <laughs> I would love it. wouldn't that. be a bad market for them to break. Just it remake really Pokemon wouldn't. Coliseum. I mean, if they can do Disney yeah, and Final right? Fantasy, they can pull off Pokemon. Just hey. Mm. Yeah, they can. Well, well, that'll be another episode on that one, too. <laughs> featuring me, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just wait for it. We will give you a nice recap of the story so far. <laughs> I mean, you and Dale, nobody else would get a word in edgewise with Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Not one. It's not a lie, but... <laughs> what about your thoughts, Derek? When I first saw the trailers, I was uh, a little worried about it. Uh, just being not because they were changing so much, like how you capture Pokemon. Yeah, you don't you battle, don't, you don't anymore. battle anymore. And... I mean, and they're, they've got like the the main trainers, and even like the mm-hmm. gyms are different now. Like, um, when yeah, when I first heard it, I was like, I don't even know if I want to get it. Um, but then 
more information came out about it, I was like, okay. I mean, it's not my typical, but, you know, I have to I'd give it a shot at least. Uh, but more information where there's actual trainers, you still battle and all that kind of stuff. You just don't battle the Pokemon to capture them. I think I can get over that. It's just going to be a little strange at first. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. And I, I don't, has anybody heard if the rumor is true that the Eevee and Pikachu can't evolve? Because I've heard that at multiple times that they can't actually evolve the starter that you get. Uh, I haven't heard that. I haven't. I guess we can look it up. Because the Eevee also has unique moves that it can get a type move from each of its evolutions. Right. So that's why I was right. confused that if they can't evolve, I'm not going to even use the Eevee that you start with. Mm. So, because I'm getting Eevee. Obviously, me too. Version. Me too. If I were to, so. well, I don't even have a Switch, and I'm like, God damn, I'm oh, so much money. <laughs> But I, what I do like is that's ma- actually making me consider buying the, tw- the the Switch is the fact that it's you can do, do two player like co op mode, which mm-hmm. I really love. The they did recently say that with the co op though it's a uh, the second person can't initiate anything. Oh really? Basically, they're just like a, a tag along where they can mm-hmm. help you capture, they help you fight, you know, battle, but they can't like they can't go challenge a gym by themselves. Mm, okay. So. Well, I'm still uh, open yeah, I, did, I, I do miss, like, local co-op. Like, there's mm-hmm. so few local co-op games nowadays, and it's just nice. Even if it's just a little bit, like, a little tag-along fairy that you would get in, like, an RPG that your uh, second oh. controller would play. Oh. The fact that, they, <laughs> the fact that they, they're doing this with Pokemon, at least it's, like, a step in that direction. Like, it could open the doors for more possible co-op play with Pokemon, which I would love the idea of that. I will say a good change that at least I think is a good change is seeing the Pokemon in the bushes and mm-hmm. you actually running mm-hmm. to them mm-hmm. to encounter them. I think that's a great change. Yeah, I've been no hoping more for wild that. Encounters a million Zubats yeah. just attacking you. And those yes, I was hoping for that for so long, so I'm glad they did that finally. Yeah. What about you, Ani? How are you feeling about the trailer of Pikachu and Eevee? So I've watched, like, as soon as any of the trailers came out, I watched it because, like, I, I have not played many Pokemon games. I've played um, Red when they released it on the 3DS for like 10 bucks for the anniversary. Mm-hmm. And um, then Alpha Sapphire. And those are the actually the only two main series games that I've played. Um, and so I was like super excited. I was like, sweet, because I got a Switch. Um, and, and I love it. And I was like, yes, I can finally put Pokemon on it. And then when it's like, oh, it's going to be pokemon go but on the switch i'm like mm, yeah, i already have yeah. pokemon go you know like yeah and, and I, I really i enjoy pokemon go i play it a lot like mm. i've um because there's actually a decent community in the town where i live and so like community days and stuff it's really fun and i enjoy it and it forced me to like get out and get active and stuff but that's i don't know one of the things that i miss the most like with playing pokemon go is the battling and the idea of not really having that, like, that was one of the parts that I really liked about the main series games, having the battling and the moves and that kind of thing. Even though, like, I wasn't good at, like, strategic <laughs> tact stuff, like, I never put enough time into it to really figure that that part out. I really enjoyed that part. Um, and so, like, not having that, like, I I am honestly not sure if I'm going to buy it or not. I pr- I'm not getting it, like, tomorrow. Um I know that much, so I'm gonna wait and sort of see what what it looks like, and then I'll I'll decide whether or not I'm actually gonna buy it. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that was my initial concern too. The fact that they were like, "Oh, it's like another Pokemon Go, but for the Switch," and I was just like, "Okay." But the more I watch like the gameplay, I'm more the more interested I am in actually like yeah. playing. And I will admit, I haven't. I haven't. Speaking seen of, any... I had to do this. I bring my Nintendo Switch. Oh my okay. goodness. <laughs> I had to do um, it. We're talking about Switch so much, I forgot that I have this, uh, like, little jacket thing that my boyfriend designed for, like, the Expos. And I was like, ha, oh. so appropriate. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I will, I will admit, I haven't seen many of the actual gameplay trailers. Uh, or, like, actual gameplay footage. So we'll see. Like, see how it goes. I need to take a little more time. I have a YouTube channel that I trust. And I love their, like, gameplay stuff. And I'm guessing they'll play part of it. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I'll probably see see how it looks then, and then maybe later on once I actually have money. Yeah. Um, I think if I had the Switch, I would definitely buy it. The fact that I don't makes it more complicated. <laughs> but I feel like if you already own the Switch, it, it's 
It's a decent buy, anyway. Mm -hmm. I bought the Switch just for this game. God damn it! <laughs> there was talk that they were going to charge a monthly fee to oh, no. play with your friends online for Pokemon Let's Go series. Uh, and, and so bad is even you can't trade with people um, unless you pay for their monthly fee. And I don't know. I mean, it was like obviously just some money scam from Nintendo because it was like... 12 people can share the same account for like six dollars a month like okay. it's ridiculous but it, it was something along those lines so i would just caution people mm. before you make the purchase because i don't know what they decided to do with it or not this was months ago mm -hmm. uh that was one thing that immediately i said i'm not gonna pay monthly to play pokemon of all games you know did mm -hmm. you guys ever use like the pokemon storage system with the ds like the monthly fee one are you talking about the pokebank uh, that's the one yeah uh, I have a friend that used it for a little while because uh, he was into competitive Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So um, he used it for a little bit, but I've never. He transferred some Pokemon over for me, but that was. I've heard it's good. Yeah, I've used it briefly just because, like, Mew's my favorite, and I had Mew in a different Pokemon game, and I was like, I want Mew in this <laughs> game. So. I know um, on the DS with the Pokemon Bank and whatnot, you can actually, they, they do promotionals for the last year. Every month they'd be giving away a new legendary Pokemon. Right, yeah, that too, yeah. And I know for one, you got, I think it was wherever Snivy was. I don't remember, was it Gen 6? Mm -hmm. Snivy and them? Yep. Uh, you got their uh, final evolution with their hidden ability if you just linked your account to the Pokebank or whatever. Or, whatnot I'm so sure i got a celebi through them too interesting mm -hmm. yeah i got a shiny uh poi pole and i'm pretty sure that's it. how i got my thing where well. you have to go to like gamestop or whatever and they give you a code yeah. and you put it into your yeah. data sometimes Some, yes but or, sometimes uh, it's just a matter of like, take it right out from the cloud service right like you okay. you do the connection thing and it's like oh you're mm -hmm. connected so here's your pokemon i'll mm -hmm. send it to you yeah, because uh, little dude's always begging to do that, and I was like, I don't even know where there's a GameStop near here because most of them have shut to down. Go, you can usually just do it through an online link. I mean, the GameStop one is easier just because it actually gives you a physical code, but you can do it mm -hmm. online as well. eBay it. That's that's what yeah, I did. No, was, my dad took them. No, are you kidding time. me? Ninety nine cents on eBay or the five dollar journey to and from GameStop <laughs> transportation. Okay. I mean, and come on. <laughs> It cost me five dollars or a dollar, and I get it on my phone. Right now, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and talk about the Detective Pikachu movie with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, <laughs> Pikachu. What are your thoughts on the trailer for that one? Disgusting. Oh no! <laughs> I I have mixed feelings about it because it looks sort of like the. The Pokemon look kind of creepy. And yes! Okay! <laughs> fucking Psyduck! Psyduck was like, there's this like, this panned- Psyduck um, is going to murder you in your sleep. <laughs> Psyduck creeped me the fuck out. I was like, yeah. Um, Jigglypuff is definitely going to like, cut you in a back alley somewhere. Um, nope. <laughs> but, the concept is cute, and my kids are extremely- Really oh, for excited. sure, for sure. So, if I was there, I'd be like to the moon and back. I'd be so excited. Man, for little dude, every time we go to Wishing Well, his one wish is I wish Pokemon were real. So for him, seeing like real people <laughs> interacting with Pokemon is the goal. It's everything, and so he is very excited, and I kind of catch a little of that, too. Yeah. Him, so. And honestly, I feel like it's been a long time coming for a live action. It's just a matter of fact that they're going to do it right. It makes me more comfortable yeah. when Ryan Reynolds is in it, and I like I love him because Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Um, yeah. But He's pretty funny. Yeah, it's, it, it confused me the fact that they chose the Pikachu detective game to base it off of. Because I much <laughs> would rather, to be honest, I much would rather to have them do, like, a completely new story or use, like, the red and blue, like, the original well, instead of Ash. Like, I feel like the reason they did that was because, A, it's already there. It's already a story. Um, So they can just, yep. like, piggyback off of it. Sure. And mm -hmm. 
in the game, the Pikachu does talk to a person. Right. So and that communication doesn't happen in any, any of the other, other games. Yeah. Any of the other media, really, mm -hmm. even. Like, I don't think it happens in the manga. I could ask my expert, but he's asleep right now. Um, I don't think it's happened in any of the books. I mean, I don't think any of them, they actually are able to communicate with each other. And in order to do a movie, it'd be really difficult if there was no way to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Have them two. communicate back with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, two Pokemon. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And the, the Pikachu from Detective Pikachu. Yeah. yeah. Mewtwo. Mewtwo. And then Mewtwo. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mewtwo. And I think Deoxys did as well in Destiny Deoxys. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, and Di I was just going to say Diancy. Yeah. Now, yes. yeah, Diancy's the other yeah. one that I can actually. But it's it's not it doesn't happen often in Detective Pikachu. Mm -hmm. It's a little, mm -hmm. little bit more mainstream. Um, or at least more, I guess, well known. Right. to some degree because they actually have that distributed so i feel like that that's probably what they were going for they're like oh this way because the only all the time i've really seen a lot of communication with pokemon is it's between the pokemon in the original yes. series yes. in the cartoon yes. there was like a couple of episodes where they were all talking to each other but again you can't live action that you could disney cartoon it right but i don't think yeah. you could live action it really effectively mm -hmm. unless you yeah. do like the garfield Right, wow. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, if that's, that's if we tried to make the first Pokemon movie, like, as a live action, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon Ranger as a live action movie. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> sure. That would actually make a lot of sense. It has a story, and it's not Pokemon talking to you. Mm. It's just Pokemon, but they're viewed differently. It's more like a conservation effort. Right. Hmm. And so that they're there's not definitely a, a more potential for a story that kind of reflects real life. Mm -hmm. But see, then the focus would be on the people more than the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And then people right. would complain it's, that it's, it's all not about, about the, who the audience is. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon movie. Well, why is it not focused on all the Pokemon? The why is... is it about the movie? The people. Like with the Transformers. Right. Movies where people were like, we don't want to talk about people. We want to talk about the Transformers. Right. And it's more about the people. So. I feel like also part of the problem is is because Pokemon's been around for so fucking long that the fan base has grown up with these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And so like I feel like while they focus still on the child uh, the children market there's still a huge market of the adults like us that would appreciate a darker Pokemon story. And it's just about finding that balance. So I'm I'm very interested to see where this live action goes. See, also, I think the the reason why they chose to do Detective Pikachu over like a normal uh, story is because it, it'd be kind of hard to do a journey of a Pokemon trainer going through all the eight battles mm -hmm. or eight gems mm -hmm. and then the Elite Four, mm -hmm. because it's you know it'd be a really bad movie if you just go just from smushed, battle to battle. Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. it'd be kind of difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. That's also, I mean, if you look back at the cartoon, the cartoon didn't do that either. Each episode had its own like overarching story of the cartoon. They might be able to like karate Beating kick it, it. Yeah. <laughs> like a montage. Like, it would just, <laughs> just do like just a little montage. montages of some of the fights, and then like pick out important moments and like the big fights or ones that are like particularly but there poignant so people in some way. Like, well, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, no matter what happens, who don't like karate kid and they're wrong. Mm. So <laughs> they would have to do more with like a team magma, a team aqua kind of thing. Yeah, it would if they would like, love, a like traditional Mystic story. versus. Like all the other ones. Oh, I would love that. Oh, geez, I'm just biased. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so based off like your initial feelings of just the trailer alone, would you see this in theaters? Would you wait for it to come to DVD, or would you just wait for it on TV? I definitely want to see it in theaters. At first, yeah. when I first heard about it, I didn't even want. I was like, a live action Pokemon. That sounds terrible. Mm. Watching the trailer, I was like, okay, not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. So yeah, I definitely I want to see it in theaters. It'd be I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm in that. I way. have no choice. Yeah, you have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Ani? I would definitely go see it in theaters, okay. mainly because like I so I've never played Detective Pikachu. I know nothing about it really, but despite the fact that I think Pokemon might look mildly creepy on the large screen. <laughs> Like, Ryan Reynolds is, is enough. Yep, yep. I love yeah. his voice yep. and his humor and, 
yeah, definitely. Okay. I feel like I would not see it any other way than on screen because I'd never be able to convince anyone to like watch it with me, and I don't think I could bring myself to like actually buy it because I'd be like, I'm only gonna watch this once probably, <laughs> and so I think that's sort of the yeah. one way I'll actually see it. Yeah, um, but I do want to see it. If I didn't have the kids, I'd I have. Oh, for, yeah, you probably wait the DVD. Yeah. <laughs> I have absurdly high standards for movies I'm going to go pay an absurd amount to watch yeah, in a movie theater, right. and unfortunately go, Detective yeah. Pikachu is not going to cut those standards. I mean, I <laughs> I didn't even go see the newest Underworld movie in theaters, even though I really wanted to. I didn't yeah. see Annihilation in theaters either, and I really wanted to see it's, that. It was so good. Wait, no, we saw that. And, like, I if I don't see those two, I'm not going to go see Detective Pikachu in theaters. I'll wait till I can pirate it. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. But... <laughs> That's just how life goes in 2018. <laughs> yeah. No, I have, I have a real strict priority system because um, I have to get babysitters to go see movies. Mm. So it's mm, like, yeah. I really want to go see the Avengers movie, but how badly do I want to go see the Avengers movie in theaters the, like, within the short time span that it's in theaters? And can I get childcare during that period of time? Mm. So... Michael is asking if we've seen the new Pokemon The Power of Us is coming to select theaters starting next weekend. I have not heard of this. It's the it's the new animated movie. I'm pretty I, sure. Oh no. <laughs> pretty sure it's the new animated movie. Oh, but no. oh, are we gonna get to see um, Team, Team Skull, you know, dipping and bobbing around like this oh, all, no. <laughs> all, all, all movie? Because that's how they are in the whole game. They just like walk up and be like, "What's up, man? What's up?" I'm just like, please stop this. They like, can't walk normally. Oh, <laughs> Isn't so funny. <laughs> I don't think I have anything going on next Saturday, so I guess I might know what I'm doing next Saturday now. <laughs> yeah, because that movie's been out in Japan since oh, July 13th. Hang on, let me Google this real quick. Cause I, don't... So. I saw a trailer for that a while ago. Yeah. Have I seen this one? We're probably just getting the, uh, the, the English version is probably what we're getting. Probably. And that's why it's going to be yeah. in the theaters for a weekend. You know, I actually probably won't take him to see it in theaters because I like to screen it. Because some of them, like, I won't let him watch the very first. I mean, the first Pokemon one kind of got dark. Because it's be fair. so sad. Yeah. It is very sad. As a child. So sad. And he, it's like 50 50 <clears throat> whether he's going to, like, burst into an emotional, like, mess. And then I don't want to deal with that in theaters. So. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have to drive. Two and a half to three hours in order to see it. Oh, nope, geez, not going not to see it. it. Yeah, no. There's new. Definitely no movie theater around me that's gonna have that, so probably yep. won't. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably just wait if for like a DVD or a drop on. Or so you find it online. <laughs> or yeah, just torrent it. It's fine. <laughs> this is how we stick out. Torrent everything. <laughs> we break the law and talk about oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Probable deniability. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it for the lols. <laughs> um, Valid coming from you. <laughs> Lip wants to know what we think the most ridiculous Alolan Pokemon are. The Muck. Most yes, Muck, yeah. but Muck was Muck. great. Yes. I used Muck yes. through the whole playthrough. Oh, no. It was great. It's so great. Good. Luck. But it keeps <laughs> It looks so freaky. I love it so much. It's so good. Oh my god. I don't think that's even a like competition. It's no, 100%. It's, it has to be Muck. It's either Muck or Meowth. Cause Meowth I was going to say Meowth. Too. I don't think I've seen yeah, Muck. Yeah. Hang on. Let me check this out because I have not seen. Meowth just looks like weird, but man, Grimer is off the charts. Oh yeah, Muck. What the <laughs> fuck? He's it's great. <laughs> it is an the best. trip. Yeah. yeah. He's the best. I love it so much. Wow. Yeah. I'd say Meowth looks so derpy. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you look up uh, Persian, it looks like it got stung in the face. Yeah. Some bees. Yes, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> Persian looks so even equally Radicate. derpy. Radicate. Mm. I didn't like See, I don't oh, like Radicate in the normal games. Yeah, so. yeah. It's just, eh. No. They're just so bad. I, when, I don't really like many of them, honestly. So I will oh, say Marowak looks pretty slash. cool. Mm -hmm. really I used cool. that through the whole playthrough too. He was it's great. 
Marowak I'm biased off. though with my love of Keyblown. I but, think um, I know the I answer, answer like to this, but who's your favorite Alolan Pokemon? I, there's, the there's really only one. It's yeah, or nine tails. Nine tails and nine tails. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's not just me. I mean, Sand Slash is a close second. Sand yeah. Slash is pretty good. Yeah, well, I but... love Hedgehogs too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 When, when the game was originally coming out, there was rumors that there was going to be a water version of Arcanine, and I was so for that, but they didn't do it. I was so mad. It's like the, the fan art was, the tail was like a dolphin fin, and it was just the coolest design ever. I was like, please, please. Please. I mean, we just spent like 30 minutes talking about like the fan art evolutions and just posting them all. <laughs> yes, we did. So let's so talk about that dragon. for a second. What's the type of evolution? I think I know the answer already, but for, for the fans and people listening at home, which Pokemon type do you want as an evolution? That's not already. Do I want? I mean, clearly dragon. Yeah. Okay. I want all the dragon everything. Um, but I wouldn't mind a steel type one either. Steel that could be really cool. If if we're I going for steampunk com- Eevee. If we're going Ooh. for competitive sense, I think steel would be great. Mm. But I think ground or rock would be also really cool. Rock would be cool. But I'm biased because I like ground Pokemon, so. I mean, just like rocks in general, so that'd be pretty cool. I say, why limit ourselves to one type? Let's start getting the dual type evolution. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, I'm down with that. I want the you ultimate know? evolution where it's like all the types. I'm, I'm fine with that. A little dragon steel evolution, you know? Yes. An EV avatar, it's just like yeah, yeah. EV avatar, I'm down with it. <laughs> that's EV Mega. <laughs> oh yes, EV Tar. That that's its name. It's done. I mean, also a pure normal EV evolution would be also kind of interesting. Mm, yeah. I mean, you probably wouldn't see play at all, but it would mm, just be cool to see yeah. the what it looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be mm-hmm. honest, I choose most of my Pokemon based off cuteness. So oh, yeah. <laughs> most, not yeah. all, because. <clears throat> Yeah, most of them are just based purely on cuteness. Now, yeah. how do you think these uh, the EVs would evolve, though? If certain things would be like an item, you know, but... Uh, because a f- my friend had an interesting theory about the ghost version, is your Eevee would actually have to faint in battle. Oh, no! Or to evolve into the ghost version. No, that would be too dark. <laughs> oh, that's real dark, fam! Are you gonna, like... I don't like that. You go to the Pokemon Graveyard, and you have to level them up at the Pokemon Graveyard and fight Pokemon Ghosts, would be a little bit less dark, but still pretty dark. Yeah, I think that would that would be more appropriate. Or they're at the Pokemon Graveyard, and then they faint, and then when you give them a healing potion and bring them back up, like, you revive them, it's like, congratulations, you're... Eevee just evolved. We're like, oh, fuck. So <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. I'd be totally okay with that. Not They'd have to start making them uh, trade evolutions. Similar to how Seedra becomes evolution. Kingdra. I do, I do yeah. too. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't have any why, friends, but... I have no friends, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but remember when, like, Glaceon and Leafeon first came out and he had to go to that stupid the rock. Stupid rock. The rock. Yeah, and just level them up near the rock. Yeah. Like, that was all... I, I'd have rather just been like, alright, I'm gonna put this up on the global trade service, because, you know, it's 2018, mm-hmm. and we have internet and Pokemon combined, and you just say, trying to trade this. And you trade it away. Or you can find one that has an item already on it being mm-hmm. traded. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a, it takes a little digging, but like it's possible. But, but that risk yeah. and reward factor. Oh yeah, yeah. you you know me. Risk and reward. <laughs> Plus, if I remember correctly, that uh, the ice rock wasn't until like almost the very end of the game. So right. you were gonna hold yeah. on to the Eevee yeah. until then. And it's like, God damn it. <laughs> Stop. Because if you level them up, you get an Umbreon or an Espeon, depending on yeah. the time of t- type of day. So you're like, mm-hmm. just stay in my Pokemon Pokedex and just wait there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Stay in my PC. Mm. A steel type without stealth rocks isn't really worth anything in competition. I have never been a competitive Pokemon player, ever. It's hard. It, it is hard to start doing. It's really fun, though. I did a lot of breeding it? for a little while. Yeah, well, I mean, I've never went to, like, any tournaments or anything. I did it with mm-hmm. some friends, and we actually, like, EV trained and all that stuff. And right, got IVs. Mm-hmm. Trained. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We all, we did that for a while. And, I mean, it's a lot of fun breeding the Pokemon. But, I mean, if you don't have yeah. people to play with, mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. worth it. So. Is, Plus, there's tons of websites EV out there that you can do that. Again? 
Why is it not? Oh god, I should know this, but I don't remember. Um. Wow, let's Google this. What is Eevee stand for? Something values. Uh, something values, yeah. It might Effort, just be values. Value. Effort, Effort values. Effort, Effort values, yeah. Effort values. Yeah. And different Pokemon reward different effort values. Right. But yeah. there is no way to track it in the game. You have to do it pen and paper style, basically. You have to track it yourself. Right. And I feel like they're doing it a little bit differently with the new Pokemon game. Like, it, it is a, something you can still do, but it's definitely not as effective as before. It's significantly easier in, in Ultra Moon, it is, I can say. Because yeah. you can get the... Um, actually, through Wonder Trade, I got the Poke Rust virus. Uh, on my Pokemon, it's uh, it's a condition that doubles their EV gain, mm -hmm. okay. um, and as long as you keep one in your um, in your in your PC, it'll right. always keep this virus on it. And as long as you just put it in your party, all other five will eventually, after about five battles, have it. Um, and then you use one of the the growth bracers, and those reduce your speed while it's held, but they give you I think it's sixteen EVs. Of whichever one you use so like when you get the uh, power brace and it uh, increases your attack growth but reduces right. speed and you right, have right, right. no idea what that actually it does means, yeah. that's what it's doing yeah because yeah. <clears throat> like for the longest time whenever i played like people would be talking about like the ev points and how to like customize your pokemon and bring your pokemon for some mm -hmm. like attacks and moves and i was like i just want the cute pokemon i don't know what the fuck i'm doing i'm screaming yeah. for babies yeah. that's that's totally yeah. me that's how i play i'm like i want the cutest pokemon i don't care if they're any good and yep. or if they're pretty it's i like them being pretty. and sometimes I... if they just look cool that's right. good too, yeah yeah but yeah, yeah I go for it's all about cool. the aesthetic yeah yeah, it's like yeah, I, recently I spent, that I've kind of understood what the EVs actually do, but I like. I spent my a other... whole day breeding. Same. A whole I've done it day. Mul multiple times for one Pokemon. Yep. yep. A lonely Vulpix on the same. <laughs> Mine was a normal Vulpix. I could not get it. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so annoying. Oh no. I got lucky and threw Wonder Trade again. I got a Rockruff with perfect IVs in every single stat. And I used that to breed with my nine tails, mm -hmm. and that enabled me to, you know, in a very chain breeding kind of way, get myself a nine tails with a perfect special attack and a perfect speed stat. So nice. it, it's my it's my opener for fights. Walk out a nice little Aurora Beam, reduce the enemy's attack, switch out to my uh, Aorus Aorus, the Ice Brontosaurus that you get from the fossil. Yeah. Yeah. That thing is sent out next, and that just clobbers everything after that. It's so good. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of work. It's definitely more enjoyable to just catch them, go through the game. Going through all the games is... You can use any Pokemon team, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. I want to... Uh, we kind of discussed this earlier in the week, but I, I kind of want to bring this up on stream because I'd like to chat to chime in too if you guys play D&D. &D, uh, if you're on this channel, we play D&D &D every single day, almost. Um, what Pokemon would your characters have and why? Yes. I'm going to have to scroll back up to see what <laughs> Yeah, like, like we all scroll back up. We're like, wait, what did we actually How many say? characters do you want? Because I've got um, Let's do a your ton, top so... two characters that... Okay, because I'm only actively playing... Because I have, now, so like, that... six or seven characters. Like, if I count Aki, Blossom, Blaze, like, that's three people in one person. I'm not going to do them because they're too complicated. But, like, say maybe, like, yeah. your first couple couple characters that you've played. Or your favorite characters that you've played. <laughs> Like, oh, those which are way Pokemon? different answers. Oh, okay, well, your choice. I mean, <laughs> um, up, up, let's do I'll two just characters. go with the two that I'm playing okay. right now. Okay, okay. Um, so Tien is definitely Lucario and Aegislash are her top two. Um, and what Nova. is Tien? Like, let, let everybody know who Tien is, like, what's her class. Oh, right, you guys don't know. I'm, yeah. like, talking with Christy and Dale. I'm like, you guys know who Tien is. <laughs> Tien is my tiefling... Sorry, uh, Tempest. She's Tempest now. Tempest cleric. Mm. Um, she used to be a forge cleric, and then she switched to a light cleric, and now she di after she died and came back to life 200 years later, she's a Tempest cleric. Mostly because fuck you, Talia. Um, Talia is the big um, Draco Lich. Not dra Dragon Lich. It's a dragon that is a Lich instead of a Draco Lich from the DMG. 
uh, a blue dragon, just because I DM'd that game, so let me give you a little yeah, co yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, context to it there. And she killed us all with lightning, so Tien was like, I'm going to just Fox use ball. that against you now, because I can. So she is very fighty. Um, she likes to hit Pokemon things again? with her sword. Lucario, Lucario. and Aegislash. And Aegislash specifically because of her uh, current weapon, and probably eternal weapon, the Holy Sword Nova. <laughs> It was a sentient weapon with a really interesting sense of <laughs> um, And then my other character is Elana, who is right. a uh, ranger half-drow, technically not a half-drow, really. She's a clone of a half-drow. Of a half-drow, yeah. <laughs> so Got she doesn't actually clones. have any drow blood in her, but um, uh, Horizon Walker ranger. And... <laughs> Sorry, Elliot just poured a lot of salt on the chat because of Talia. Um, <laughs> and Elana, I think I decided on, gosh, I knew I just decided on Starmie. And I think that her other, I know I did a lot of psychic. Mm -hmm. I have to go back to what her other main one was. But I also said maybe Cosmog because of the stars, stars yeah. theme for her. I can't remember what her main one was. That's okay. It's one of the big ones. Let me go back. While you're looking. Annie, what about you for your characters? Um, <clears throat> so I have I have two characters, so that's easy enough for me to pick yep. which two to yep. do. <laughs> you have two. Um, so the one that I play on stream, Raz, um, I think her two would be um, a Ditto and an Articuno. Um... Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, also, the first legendary bird I ever caught. Why, did, why um, did you choose those two for for Raz? So Raz is. Um, <laughs> shut up, Derek. Um, <laughs> I know why. I know. Why, I know you but... know why. But um, part of it I can't tell anyone. For and backstory part of it, reasons. <laughs> yes, for backstory reasons. Um, but also, just sort of is a a thief, a spy. And so she, like, is <laughs> cold and calculated and also just have the ability to sort of change her backstory whenever she wants in order to get what she needs out of people. Um, and the rest will be unsaid. <laughs> um, and you just have to watch Delvin Dash. At some point, we'll find out. Delvin Dash, the one that was on just before us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then for Ukes, which is my um, gnomish bard that I play in the Sunday game, um, I pick Furret and Salandit. Um, oh. I know. Furret just because they're, like, fucking adorable. Yes. And I love them. And Yukes is kind of me. And so, therefore, Yukes will love it. Um, and then the Salandit, because we had this whole thing where Yukes got everyone in the party geckos. Because reasons. Because reasons. And, um, because the DM wasn't there, so we could do what we wanted. Um, As you do. <laughs> and also, like, they have this sort of, like, they have the, I believe it's an acid ability, and Eus was, like, doing some pretty sweet shit this last weekend, and um, being very sneaky and sort of um, becoming a bit more, honestly, a bit more like Raz, a little more cold and calculated, um, and so that's sort of the ability to, like, kind of put... Um, corrosion out there she's some of the things she's thinking that she might be doing are uh going to corrode a few relationships mm. that exist mm. um so that kind of interesting was sort of what what went that one in there um, not intentionally for the party don't worry christy i'm <laughs> thinking more <laughs> i'm scared I know, I know. no i'm thinking um bryant and desiree oh, are gotcha, sort of gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. that's that's my goal there so don't worry i'm not gonna cause any I more trust drama. you, it's okay. <laughs> oh, Pokemon it's a tells idea. a story, guys. <laughs> uh, what about you, Derek? Well, I, just real quick, I did look back and it's Lunala. Oh, right. Yep, yep, yep. Lunala. Uh, well, I chose the two characters that I play on proficiency bonus sure. for me, so yeah. uh, Silver is was a little bit difficult for me to choose because I'm still just getting into his, mm -hmm. his character. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just went through, basically pure, picked a pure dragon, since he's a dragon-born, dragon. uh, yeah. uh, and he's a warlock. Um, so I picked uh, 
Haxorus for him because he kind of resembles Haxorus is a pure dragon and he kind of resembles uh, he's silver has those spikes and kind of things. Uh, he also uses a uh, shimitar <clears throat> and Haxorus kind of has that kind of like curvature spike on his uh, jaw or head. Um, and then I picked Weevil because I am a silver dragonborn, so he's ice and Weevil, you know, ice. And also Weevil has uh, the little kind of like shimitar kind of claws. Mm -hmm. So that's why I picked that. It was kind of hard to pick for silver, but uh, now for Aeon, a little bit easier. Uh, Aeon is a sorcerer and he was a um, warlock for a little while. That was a celestial warlock. So he's always had an, uh, a fascination with stars. <laughs> yeah, until he lost his eye. Um, he's always had a fascination with the stars. So I picked Starmie for that. Uh, he also has a fascination with water, which I know doesn't come up very much at all. But uh, We've kind of been so that's why I picked Starmie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one is when I was a warlock, I, he had a uh, familiar that was a fairy. So I picked Floette, which is Silly. basically a fairy. With that holds a flower, and no. my my familiar would eat flowers. Yep. So. Yep. That was so. That's cute. why I picked star. those. Oh, I miss yeah. So cute. <clears throat> yeah, I think Alana and Aeon would probably get along. Together. I was just thinking the same <laughs> so thing. They totally would get along. <laughs> Alana is literally uh, the god of space right now, so yeah. we're god mode. Awesome. On that always been obsessed with the stars. So. Literally. literally. He was god his mode. his uh his patron was uh, Celestian. I don't know if you know who that is, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah from Grand that was Great. patron for his warlock. All right, Dale. What about you? Two characters. I, I had a question for Ani actually. Sure. Why? Why Salandit over Salazzle? Um, because like I'm not because so well partly because Yux is a gnome, and so the smaller sort of mm -hmm. um, yeah. and also I think um. Like the, is it Salazzle, right? That's the name of the evolved one. I don't mm -hmm. know them as well. Um, like even just looking at the picture, it seems like a, a sort like I mean it's a more mature mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Pokemon, whereas like Yux is still, in many ways, still pretty naive and sort of young. Um, and so I think like to land it, it's it makes more sense with. Um, where her character is at right now. Yeah, and she's that. sort of, she's still sort of figuring out how to use sort of those like slyer, sneakier parts. And so I think she's sort of, she's still she learning hasn't, how she to use. Yeah, she hasn't <laughs> evolved into like being able to really um, sort of do more of the sneakier things. You're getting the... there now though, goddamn. <laughs> I rolled really well last week. <laughs> It was very good. Was good. It was so good. I chopped off a guy's arm. It was we'll good. We'll tell Del that story nice. later. Because he'll yeah. appreciate it. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, um, yeah. Because um, I, did, I did look at... Um, I did look at the Evolve form, but it, it just didn't feel quite right. It felt like um, Slant it just fit fit Yuke's a bit better. Cool. Well, my... I guess I'll do Jeeves first. Because you're talking about gnomes. <laughs> anyway, speaking of gnomes, the little bastard Jeeves... <laughs> Uh, he is, he was a College of Lore Bard, um, and then stuff and things occurred where he started a crusade, uh, basically, to prevent the extinction of dragons um, against a Witch Queen. And so he starts doing all this, and he goes from this very kind of laid-back character where I could just do absurd things. I mean, we had one session, I don't even know if Christy was, was there for this one yet, but our ship underwent a storm, yep, and my no, solution was just before I got here. <clears throat> yep, oh, was God. I was gonna run on the outside of the ship because uh, I had this special anti gravity orb that basically gave me spider climbing abilities. And I, with my Tinker's tools and the help of my allies on the inside of, of the ship, fixed the ship. <laughs> um, was so traumatized. His two Pokemon are Kingdra, uh, because. Kingdra takes a long time to ob obtain, but Kingdra's amazing. That's how I feel it really is Jeeves. Jeeves took a long time to get somewhere where he was powerful. He was a College of Lore bard. He was more, I roll Arcana, and I learn things, and I figure things out, but I, and I support my party, but I'm not necessarily powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and then Delphox, because nothing is more mischievous than a fiery fox. Yeah. 
and yeah. the the draconic powers that he gotten that he has are fire based. Mm -hmm. So I thought the Firefox there would be good, and it's psychic, very smart things like that. Uh, Yuko, Yuko is a little more interesting in his Pokemon selection. He is my uh, Fallen from Grace ASMR Paladin. Uh, he was a Hexblade Warlock when I first played him in this campaign, in our Monday Night campaign. Actually, both characters, fun fact, are from the same game. Yeah. Uh, he, For him, I gave him Mega Absol. Uh, because Yuko is just one of those characters that takes the extra turn... Mm -hmm. To make, I mean, we spent one fight where I probably spent the first six rounds of combat doing nothing but charging up. It was Dragon Ball Z style. Up, yeah. <gasps> and then I took the boss for 156 damage in one hit. So, like, it took a, it takes a, a while to set it up, but once you get it there, it's strong. And then it was Alolan Ninetales, but I'm going to have to switch it back to regular Ninetales oh. in light of what happened on Monday. Right. yep. Yeah, Can't be the ice fairy now. type when he's when he himself is the uh, after avatars before gods of his domain being fire. So I, I have to give him regular nine tails now. But it was Aeolian because he was a cold hearted bastard and just didn't really <laughs> care about how him, how people think. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then he was punched in the face and kicked in the shins enough where now he loves the party. Yeah. Monday night it's physical abuse. Tuesday night it is kidnapping. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, for me, oh, I have so many characters. Uh, I'll start with Callista because she's my Friday night. She's my first character I've ever played on proficiency bonus. So for Callista, she's my Drow Druid. Um, I chose Charizard because she's now able to fly and she's very hardcore, kind of like Bubbles, but. She recently had to fight, I can't even remember what she had to fight, but she had a fireball necklace, like, with eight oh, no, charges. Are we frozen? It looks frozen. Oh, no. No, that, that happens just to me sometimes, Crystal, where everyone starts to, like, robot, but no one makes a stink about no, it, so I just assume it's me. frozen on the feed. Oh. Really? I, I mean, I don't know if I it's think it's else, you. But... Oh, yeah, it looks good to me. Okay. Oh, yeah, Callista is edgy without being edgy. Okay, so basically, Callista had this fire, this necklace of fireballs, basically on her on her person for months, and never touched it, never used it. She kind of was using it as a last resort. And I, as a player, was like, oh, I'll probably just throw one at a time. Like, I'll I'll make it last. And we get into this encounter, and it was basically like, I think it was like a mind flare or something. They were, it was some guy that was messing with our heads, messing with my party's heads, and trying to get them to go into this room for nefarious reasons. And Callista was so done. She's like, nope, you do not get to probe my brain and try and get in into my psyche and mess me up. So she just took the entire fireball necklace and just blasted it at him, and I... Chat went wild and pretty much said, Callista just nuked the bad guy. And when it comes to nukes and fire, I'm just like, that's so Charizard. Like, it's so badass and so yeah. strong. Like, it's so... Blast burn. Just blast them. So I chose Charizard for that reason. Even though it's not really a drow druid thing, it's just very in character for her nature and just being very edgy. Yeah, as as Elliot would say, she's very edgy. Um, also, I mean, look, at, look at Ash's Charizard, like... Yeah. Yeah. He's got an attitude, yeah. yeah, he's got he's Callista has an attitude, Charizard has an attitude. That it, it goes one, hand in hand. Um my second one would be Xerneas. Is that how you pronounce it? Xerneas? Yeah. Yeah. So I can confirm my expert has pronounced that one for me. Okay, so it's like the the, the big elk deer with the rainbow oh. horns and stuff. It's kinda like the legendary one. And Callista has a thing for elks and she might have dropped a giant elk on somebody, so as you do. What is wrong with you and dropping stuff on people? It's so fun! I dropped one <laughs> on <laughs> Sunday with a saber tooth tiger. I dropped bubbles on <laughs> from a broom <laughs> with her fucking sword, and then I just dropped an elk. <laughs> you you killed a dragon by dropping a scimitar on its head. <laughs> it's so fun to just like drop Come in, on. in one shape form. I, I can't deny it. And she's a druid, and it's kind of got like the bluey, purpley mystical nature thing going on so that's her her second one and it's pretty badass and also Xerneas has the spell moon blast which is my equivalent to moonbeam and that's that's a favorite spell of mine in D&D &D. 
And uh, who's the other character I want to talk about? Maybe Bubbles. Why not? the fuck not? Let's do Bubbles. I have other characters I can talk about, but let's do Bubbles. Uh, Baratic, obviously, because he's hardcore and he's a bear and he's a very big polar bear. He's so strong. And her commune with nature spirit is a squishy water polar bear that she loves to hug. So I think Baratic really suits Bubbles in terms of just pure brutality and just also a big bear for her to hug. And then her other one would be Mew because why the fuck not? It's cute as fuck, but also really strong. So that's that's Bubbles. She's cute and strong. Yeah. So Mew, that would be. Yeah, that's a very Bubbles. bubbles. Oh, I should have done that for her little icon. That would have been so cute if she had like a little Mew one. Okay, I'll have her do that next time. That's okay. Um, let's see where we're at. We're running a little over time, but that's okay. Let me check. Is there any other things you guys want to talk about in terms of Pokemon or any things I haven't mentioned yet? I mean, we haven't really talked about the um, anime at all. Okay, sure. sure. <laughs> and for me, that was actually the first... I watched Net the Netflix. Um, they had the whole first season oh. out. And that was my first... I watched I them as the they came on TV, you guys. Yeah, I <laughs> watched it religiously on YTV. In, in Canada, what TV? Yeah. And then I had a flight back from New Zealand like a year or so ago, and they had like a bunch of random movies, but then they had like three different Pokemon movies, and so I was like, well, this is what I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. Yes. How did you, also, they how did you feel about so. the fact that they've changed people that travel with Ash so frequently? Because I hate I- it. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm in team boat that I hate it. Like it just drives me uh, nuts. I hate that he never changes. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's he never changes. That's a little frustrating. He's, He's eleven. I feel like thirty years. Yeah, you know what? I feel like they should just if they were gonna change his companions, they probably should have just made like Pokemon 2.0 and made a new mm-hmm. lead for each. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Because well. yeah. yeah. that's what they do with the game. Right. Yeah. Like it's never the same mm-hmm. like lead character, and they make them into like companions now instead of making but they could have just made him into the lead Brock is so. the best yeah boy. Brock bb i mean i do miss uh misty a lot but you know she was I just love misty. she was my I, yeah misty was great i do was, like some of the new companions though the, the latest one at, no sun and moon with the alolan mm. i like a lot of the the companions they have a lot more right. it's like a little pokemon mm-hmm. school right with a whole bunch of little trainers, and I love what's her name, Lily. Is that the little one with the white hair? God, she's so cute. Yeah, and with, she has uh, her little Alolan Vulpix. No, she's got the Alolan Vulpix, Snowy. That's her. That's why she's the cutest. Duh. She is adorable beyond word. So I, yeah, I'm a fan of that one. I haven't watched much of that uh, oh, that no. cartoon I series. Don't get a I haven't choice. watched the cartoon <laughs> series probably since like four seasons, like the first four seasons, first five seasons. I don't know. Basically, Fuck. when they got rid of Mr. <clears throat> Brock, I slowly stopped watching it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the same with me. Yeah, there's some of them that I don't like. I I never kept up with it. I watched it when it originally aired, mm-hmm. and then I got out of it for a long time, and then. I didn't watch any of it until um, Little Dude got into it about four years ago, and I put on the original for him, and he was in love, and um, he has Asperger's, so for him, that's his fixation, is Pokemon. So it's Pokemon 24-7, he knows everything, and gets involved in all of the Pokemon fandom. I think it's um, a healthy hobby, to be honest. Sure. I'm I'm good with it. Just sometimes it's a safe it's, and healthy. Home. I can't. I cannot keep up with the <laughs> amount of information yeah. that he knows. There's just no way to log all of that. My brain I mean, does not work the way his does. We're now on like what eight generations of Pokemon? Yeah, now? isn't that? Insane? And he knows all of them and all of their types. Yeah, and like he, I can just say, hey, what's a grass steel type? And he knows like which ones are grass and steel, and he'll just list them off for me like that. And I was like, I, I can't keep up. I, I know the first 150 just... for sure. I know the first gen. Maybe the second yeah. and third a little bit as well. But once they got yeah. into like the fifth gen and, and later, I'm like, I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. You have a walk, walking Bulbapedia with you. Yes. I <laughs> literally do. He's working on memorizing heights weights at this point because wow. he's, he runs out of stuff to learn oh, about them. Oh, that's he... adorable. So, yeah. 
That's amazing. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, so we've seen um, whatever is on Netflix, we've seen all of it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, multiple yep. times. And I'm very familiar with, uh, I think Sun and Moon is probably the one I've seen the most of, um, just because usually I leave when they start putting shows on, so I don't have to watch what they're watching. But that's, I think, the one that they put on that I would sit and kind of watch with them a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's annoying how Netflix, like, half the time they only put up half of yeah, the it is. Show. And it's like, because I think it was black and white that I've watched the first half of, but I haven't watched the second mm-hmm. half because Netflix just doesn't have it. Oh, like, oh it's even more infuriating when it's only the second half. And oh. Elliot says his Netflix only has one season of Pokemon on it. Man, it depends. So They've, like, added stuff, taken stuff away. I think the only thing they normally keep on there is Indigo League. Right. And, yeah. the and the movies. The movies, and the movies usually yeah. is consistently the same, like, three or four that are on. I know it's the Diancie one, the, the Hoopo one. The one is really good. I like that one. I can't remember. Did I think there's one. Did any of you guys one... watch the original movie in theaters? Yes, I cried. Yes. And Did any of you guys get the Mew? I got the Mew. Yes! The Mew, yes. The Mew card! I love it! No, it was I so great. That, but yeah, I... I... I wonder where my Pokemon cards <laughs> it's are. It's so exciting. There's one where uh, Ash dies, right? Baby, yeah. like, turns to yeah. stone, yeah. like, Noah. Yeah. 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 Spoilers, come on. <laughs> spoilers! Oh, I'm sorry. Like, 20 years <laughs> later, hashtag spoilers. <laughs> I literally cried during that movie, me too, okay? Me too. Yeah. Uh, I cry over nothing, and I cry You two was me, dropping so. that knowledge, though. Mm-hmm. The that final, one. like, monologue with Mewtwo, I'm like, damn, boy, you got me good. <laughs> also, though, that movie confirms that Pokemon is in our world, because... They're talking about Vikings, and they're like, I thought that was only in Minnesota. <laughs> Saying. Also, I'm from Minnesota, that's why I care. Um, nice. Get them so, Pokemon yeah. fossils, Anna, Hottie. <laughs> hey, geologist of Minnesota. You, you, you're you're, you're already made. You already got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any last questions from chat? <laughs> Pokemon is lost on me, and I'm uncultured. It's okay. It's okay. You can get into it at any point. You don't have to have been into it as a really kid. Yeah. Yep. Like very I, easy. Any season you can jump <clears throat> in. Yep. I started the watching the anime when I was in 11th grade and didn't start playing until I was a freshman in college. Elliot, so. bitch, I love Digimon. Don't get me started. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I never got into it. I, I liked Digimon. I didn't watch I didn't watch all of it there. Like I watched the first season or two, I think, and then but I was by that point I was getting into more um mature anime. Mm-hmm. So and I wasn't watching anything that was on TV. I was getting DVDs because I worked at a, a anime store. So we would just get that the DVDs in and I'd be like, forget this. I don't need to watch anything that's on TV. So I never watched Naruto and. I never watched what was it's it? It's fine. You can skip about eighty percent of Naruto. Yeah, and basically it's all filler. So you're not missing much. <laughs> I love Naruto. I like oh. Naruto, but not the filler <laughs> too. The filler is I, I found a list online of all the filler crap oh, to skip. Oh, but, yeah. but this one recommended ones that were like you should watch it because it's actually interesting and yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And then the ones of like, no, please skip this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some filler ones that are decent, but mm. I'm not sure how that works for Pokemon because, like, I never Inuyasha, read Inuyasha. That was the other one. Yes, Inuyasha. I never, I never watched that because, again, it was the it, they started putting it on TV, and I was, I was only watching stuff that I was pulling straight from DVDs, like Fruits Basket and stuff like that. When Pokemon was on, what other shows did you watch in conjunction to that? That was on like the same time slot. Do you guys remember? Because I, like, I was ours was always forever. Pokemon, and then right after was Dragon Ball Z. It was such That's a weird, probably, bizarre probably switch. The same for me. Yeah. I definitely watched Sailor Moon around the same Sailor age. Moon always came on at around noon, so I would come home for lunch from elementary school and watch Sailor no, Moon. No, I think I was later. I think Sailor Moon was later, because I feel like Sailor Moon was closer to, like, junior high, high school. Have you guys watched the that. original Pokemon, like the Japanese version? Have you Have, no. have you heard the voices? I have no. Not. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's 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 an interesting switch because we're also oh watching... Power Rangers. I'll let you make a good point there. Yeah, yeah so it was probably Power watching... Rangers. I was definitely watching Power Rangers alongside Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was very big into Power Rangers when I was a kid. That and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Thundercats. 
I mean, we're kind of going off topic. It's fine. We're almost done anyway. Uh, Pirates of Dark Water. Someone's asking, did we watch the rap battle the Critter made about Critical Role against Caleb and Molly? Yes, and I it heard was about fucking it. great. But I have not yet. It was so good. The cosplay was really good. The I'm not. I was wasn't... amazing, but them spitting spitting lines were great. I loved it. <coughs> well, um, I'll do Tommy one last question. Best, though, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't know how many of you guys know Lip, kind of sorta, not really. Yeah. I've seen him on here a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Well, we are best friends now. Okay, Christy. well, <laughs> he's asking. He asked me, "What is the most amazing thing about Lip you can think of? You can pick four things if it's hard to choose." <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. He and I understand the old lady next door in Chicago that just be give you the stank eye because you didn't shovel your driveway. Let's <laughs> struggle with the snow. <laughs> you also understand how terrible Malort is all in right. any given situation. It is a for those of you that do not know, um, it is a Chicago brewed whiskey, and it is horrible. It is just. The devil's urine. It is so bad. It is just, I don't know how they still sell this product but anywhere. They do. <laughs> but, they do. but they do. No, I love Lip. He's amazing. He's a great friend. I've known him for over a year now. And yeah, he's one of my best friend. So I love him a lot. Yep. I've, I have too yeah. many things to choose from. You're yeah. Right. I would just. I would just like to say he's an awesome human being. He's a very awesome human so. being. And he helped organize. He's now like my show manager, basically. He helped organize this episode, found most of my guests for me, helped me pull in, helped me with the questions and the topics. So he's really stepping up his game with helping me with Mystic Hour. And I'm so thankful because I've been going through a lot of shit on my end IRL. So he's he's just so precious to me. So thank you, Lynn, yeah, for and tonight, is, even though you're not here. He is always there when you need someone to talk. Like, yeah. I've called him cool awful dude. times at like mm-hmm. 10 to Ungodly 10 hours. or midnight yep. being like, hey, I just need someone to talk to you. And he's like, I'm there for you. Yeah. So, that is so. incredibly appreciated. Thanks, baby. Thanks for helping me out with this show. It's so helpful because I had no we idea what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> but I think we managed. We are now running late. Critical Role is going to be starting soon. So uh, any last thoughts, shout outs, comments before we wrap up? Fascinating. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday, all. January 29th, I hope that each and every one of you are sitting at home on either your PlayStation or Xbox playing Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes! That's all I have to say. <laughs> I thought I could play the first two before I can play the third one. Oh, no. Yeah, no, you, you have to the first nine before you can play the first nine. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't forget about the DS ones. Exactly. I will say that Mystic Hour and anything Fire that I'm producing eyes. is going to be taking a break for that week when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. Just, mm-hmm. just oh, we point. already know D and D is coming to a screeching halt. D and D, everything, week. Mystic Hour, everything is coming yep. to a screeching halt for Kingdom Hearts 3, and then me and Dale will come in and have a show on it. I'm gonna have to start some one shots up. Yep. To cover me. Yep. Well. That being said, thank you to my guests, Dale, Crystal, Ani, and Derek for jumping in kind of last minute for this cool little Pokemon nostalgic show. Uh, thank you to chat for staying poppin'. Thank you to our sponsor, DiceBard.com. Go check them out for dice and D&D merchandise and enter the coupon code PROBO, P-R-O-B-O, for free expedited shipping to anywhere in the world. They're very awesome, and they're actually based in Vancouver, which makes it even better because Ooh. Canada. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is about it for today. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next week. Okay, love you. Bye. 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 Bye.